The internet's auditory version of Reddit. I'm Nelson Allingham, joined by Michael Campbell. Campbell! Nelson, every single week, oh. we do this bloody podcast. I know. And I and yeah. we love it. We yeah, a little twist. <laughs> love it. We do love it. What I hate is the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Picking up rid of them. This is perfect. If we could... Just like it was when we began. Yeah. We're we, doing it, but no one's listening. No one's listening. There's so much pressure <laughs> at the moment to do something moderately funny. Yeah. You know? Have you ever felt pressure on this show to be funny? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah. in the slightest, yeah. Campo. You'll notice from the content I produce <laughs> on said podcast. <laughs> And sometimes I go for a joke, doesn't land. That's all. I just we we don't cut it. We don't cut it. No, it's just there. <laughs> uh, so hey, so something weird uh, this weekend. Okay, I went to a wedding. Oh, uh, that is weird. Yeah, and yeah, and you know it's a you know it's a really important wedding when it's your girlfriend's auntie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Oh, it's Biggie. It's Biggie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's true. There's a lot of pressure there. Yeah. Uh, mm. So they had said, uh, they said, oh, we don't like, don't get us a gift or anything. Maybe you could just uh, like film the wedding or something like that. Okay. It's kind of like, oh, I'd rather get you a gift. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Filming weddings are quite hard. It's, it's but, a lot of time yeah, yeah. involved. And but I was that like, is, okay, wait, that, just break that, that down for a second. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to say this so you don't have to, Camp. Uh, Your yeah. relationship with yeah. the family is safe if they happen to listen to this wedding. <laughs> just make it clear. Episode. Just make it clear. I'm yeah. not saying this. Not saying this. Go on. A wink. Uh, <laughs> um, but a, uh, uh, a, a videographer, wedding yeah. videographer, might charge like two grand yeah. for a wedding. They've asked you <laughs> for a $2,000 wedding present. That's insane. Yeah. Oh, hey, boyfriend of the, <laughs> my niece, <laughs> can you film the wedding? It's only that is roughly $2,000 yeah. worth of value. That's insane. Anyway. Anyway. It was there. From what the- takeaway did you get? Did you get anything to take away from the wedding? You know, like a mug that says like I was at the wedding or anything like that? Uh, no. Uh- what? <laughs> oh, my God. Can't um, believe this. You've been gypped. Yeah. This is a scam. What you've, but- what's happened here is you've been scammed. <laughs> <laughs> but- was it even a real wedding? No. no. <laughs> I'm just out $2,000. <laughs> but what? what and Stacey was kind of like, uh, she was like assisting me all day. Uh, yeah. And- what what we we discovered? I mean, I've filmed weddings before, but yep. it's this weird experience, which is that you were there for all the really big moments in someone's life. Yeah, just there, like they, she didn't know me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's like I was with her. Mm. She walked down the aisle for yeah. her wedding. Yeah, but the moment you, you could have, you, you were like, it's it's funny that you know it's the father and the bride. Yeah, and then also the cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> like so it's, it's very intimate. It's like. In years' time, the groom would be like, I still remember you walking down the aisle. You look beautiful. Your brother was there. Cambo was there. <laughs> I remember specifically Cambo being there. But yeah. it really hit home at one point. Uh, we went off to have photos. And he has this big uh, – the, the groom has this, like, big vintage fire truck. He's like, I want to go in this big old vintage – like, it's from Anaheim. Okay. Big old vintage, like, 1930s fire truck. And we'll go down and we'll get pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. So we did all that, and obviously the bride and groom always leave the wedding a little for a little bit. Yeah, and then we came back, and we're sitting with them in this old fire truck that turns the corner, and everyone's just cheering <laughs> as they're coming back. And Stacey's like, "We shouldn't be here. <laughs> this is really weird. It's so <laughs> awkward. Oh my god, you got cheered with the bride and groom. It, were, yeah. you, were you? I mean, you were dressed for the wedding though, because yeah. right? Okay, because I know some videographers. You know, oh, they'll, yeah. they'll wear Wigapola something a little more sorry. comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Um, to run around. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been so that makes it worse to film, let me tell you, being yeah. dressed for a wedding. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Oh, man, that's so funny. <laughs> I love that idea, though. But you and Stacey got to experience that. Yep. Perhaps so you know what it's like for your own wedding. I did say as we go to the car, don't get any ideas. Or you're like, oh, well, that's what I was like. Don't need to go through the whole... Every, everything's thing. here. Should we just quickly get married? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything's set up. It's been paid for. Yeah. <laughs> All your family's here. My family probably won't come anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you could have FaceTime, Tim Campbell. That's true. 
Quickly call mum. Uh, real quick, we're getting married. Uh, if you can get here in time, it's going to happen <laughs> in about 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, Camber, should we get into Reddit on Reddit? Oh, please. Maybe. Oh, yeah, this isn't the stories about wedding podcast. It should be, though. It could be. Yeah, Is anybody enough. doing that? I'm sure. I don't think it, you know anybody, every that's idea. A very specific. You know every idea. Yeah. It's got a podcast. Yeah. But I, I think there would be podcasts about weddings. But is there podcasts about people going to weddings and then <laughs> them just telling their experiences? Yeah. We should start a podcast called Wedding Stories, but they're specifically not about your wedding. Yeah, you it's can, about stories. You at can't weddings. talk about your right. own wedding. <laughs> that would be against the rules. <laughs> Write in if you want to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. Or hear with that. a wedding story. <laughs> Sometimes there's great stories yeah. about weddings coming soon. What was the cake like? <laughs> They're normally pretty good. Nah. <laughs> anyway, here's one. This is from um, Horror Movie Monster. Ooh. And it was in the subreddit, Crazy Ideas. Kidnap. I just realized this says, kidnap a someone. <laughs> <laughs> kidnap a someone. Kidnap a someone. This is an Italian yeah. guy, obviously. Uh, kidnap someone. Knock him out. Drive to an Olympic swimming pool, drain said pool, fill it with 2% milk, put the guy in scuba gear and toss him in. Put the tarp over the pool so he can't surface. Let him wake up floating in an almost endless sea of white, wondering where he is and what it is. <laughs> I, you know, occasionally yeah. I really like the crazy ideas <laughs> from the <laughs> crazy ideas subreddit. This does sound like we, we often have these extreme weird pranks that we want to pull. I think last week we were talking about buying a house next to a home and then renovating the house <laughs> exactly like and then demolishing it. Yeah. This is that level of effort to be yeah. like, yeah. For one guy to be like, oh, I'm a bit confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've gone to so much effort. It's good, though. It it's because it's funny to put people in awkward situations. Yeah, it really is. Can I tell you before we move on with this? Mm. Um, I did get confused when it said fill it with 2% milk. Because mm. I thought, did it mean volume? 2%? No, I think it, it means, doesn't. No. It meant 2%. Fat milk. Yeah. Have you never heard that term? No, we, I we have, but I mean, it's just very confusing in right. this context. <laughs> yeah, because if you put 2% and then the rest is water, it would mainly look like water. Yeah. <laughs> we have just a bit of a murky yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, God. Imagine just waking up in milk. <laughs> Your skin would be glowing. Oh, my God. It'd be so great. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's quite nice. <laughs> um. Here's what I was thinking. I think maybe we should uh, try and up the craziness mm -hmm. of putting somebody in a strange situation I after knocking saying. them out. Release a milk shark. Release a milk <laughs> shark. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, that would full be... cream milk shark. Oh, no. That He's going to be... die. <laughs> <laughs> no. That would... Wait, would that not even be weirder? Let's say you're in a pool. Mm -hmm. All you can basically see is milk or a white liquid substance. And then every so often you're swimming around and you bump into a dead shark. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I, mean, I think, I think the question is to up the, uh, to, to up the ante. Uh, it could be a shark, but it's about adding an item in there that's going to be even more confusing <laughs> when they discover the item. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Like maybe there's like $10,000 cash. Yeah. Just floating around in there. You're like, what's go what's been going? <laughs> yeah. Something bad has happened. <laughs> yeah. I have committed a crime. <laughs> I do not know what's happened, but I have committed a crime. Um, yeah. Okay. I like that. Or idea. like you pay people to be just outside the pool. So when he gets out, everyone's like, you disgusting piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. So then he's thinking like, what have I done? <laughs> oh, yeah. How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> You, you've got some nerve showing your face around here after what you did to that town. The whole town. Oh, my God. Oh boy. Um, this is what I was thinking. Like, okay, swimming pool is great. Mm -hmm. But in terms of, like, just putting, I guess, humans in general in an in a uncomfortable situation, I think the prime location is an Ikea store <laughs> because... <laughs> You walk into one of those and you don't know if you're going to get out. <laughs> I think you could do the same sort of thing. Knock somebody out in the head, mm -hmm. put them in an Ikea store, block all the exits. Then, you know what? Still put milk all over the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Fill the Ikea just, with 2% milk. There's, <laughs> there's just like kind of a thin layer of milk mm -hmm. everywhere. What no if matter where you also, go. <laughs> also, you put mannequins everywhere. 
Okay. Like, like not dressed. Like, because I think naked mannequins are weirder. Yeah, naked mannequins are weirder. And you, there's just and you're, sexier. You, you're make. in an empty IKEA. <laughs> yeah. There's milk on the floor, and there's mannequins everywhere. <laughs> yeah. uh, You'd be like, this is worse than anything I've seen in Saw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. That'd be great. Oh, my God. We should turn this into a reality TV show. <laughs> milk pranks. <laughs> <laughs> Every prank somehow involves milk, obviously. Uh, yeah. Sponsored by yeah. Pura Milk. <laughs> like, like there's some, you know, sometimes in prank shows, there's like little small two, three minute ones before they go to like a commercial. Yeah. Guy goes to his car, opens the door full of milk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's just a simple milk prank. Not, not too serious, that one. You got milk pranked. <laughs> Do we go punk style and just go after celebrities? <laughs> yes. Hey, Jason Momoa, you got milk punk. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. Goes into his tank to film the next Aquaman full of milk. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really yeah, good. Yeah. It'd be hard to get him to jump into a yeah, tank yeah, full yeah, of milk yeah. without him knowing yeah, yeah. what it is. Jump yes. in, but this is important, Jason. Don't look. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get it in a second. <laughs> Do they actually even do much work in the water? I don't know. <laughs> probably, not, probably, probably not at all. Yeah, yeah. But anytime you had to, it'd be yeah. milk. Do you know what you should do? Yeah. Is CGI the milk in later. <laughs> and then he's not even aware he got pranked. <laughs> <laughs> not until he watches some of the clips back. Yeah, he gets, like, he, he, is... he gets the first poster design. Like, yeah. What's Dairy Man? <laughs> it's Aquaman. Like, oh, we didn't tell you. <laughs> It's uh, been completely changed to milk. He's like, is this a milk prank? And then we come up like, ah, we got you. Uh, yeah, milk pranked. And then we you th- spent $30 million on a movie. <laughs> we throw a pitcher of milk in it. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, should, we should say at the end, we always tip a pitcher of milk over where the person is. <laughs> yeah, we should. Yeah. But then we give them some yogurt. Yeah. That's, that's how we signify the end of the prank. <laughs> Because you can never be sure mm. that you're not going to continuously get milk bread. <laughs> <laughs> <Unless laughs> we give the yogurt. yogurt. <laughs> the yogurt. And that's how we get our corporate sponsorship. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yo play, whoever wants to sponsor <laughs> the thing. There's so many opportunities. Because then you're, or you're, what you're getting is footage of people being relieved and happy that they're getting your product. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's such an easy sell. Oh <laughs> I mean, they're covered in milk. There's like, so many, oh, thank God this is over. There's okay. so many streaming services coming up. <laughs> they need content, Russell. <laughs> I think this is the birth of milk prints. <laughs> We've got this straight away. Oh, my God. This is brilliant. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Let's get into Oscar. <laughs> This ask credit is by uh, the Vanessa Garcia. What are y'all's thoughts on having a scientist run for presidential office in the future? Oh, I don't think they'd get elected. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Not get it. Because they, 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 they'd, they'd be like, place. "Look, as a scientist, we need to take action on climate change," mm. and everyone and like everyone with like. Deep pockets that is like uh, profiting, yeah, yeah. like fossil fuels or whatever. Like, well, obviously, kill his campaign. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's not like he's like, I'm a scientist. I'm so rich. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, so you need yeah. that money. All popular. He's probably a nerd. Yeah, yeah. All scientists. Who's the nerd. most popular scientist? Bill, uh, Bill Nye, maybe. Uh, uh, still you- alive. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, because if they're running for president. <laughs> Hopefully they're alive. Stranger things have happened, Cam. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> um, Do you think if it came down to I it mean, and they're like, Nelson, you, your your decision here will deem yep. what's going to happen. You can have President Trump again or this corpse. <laughs> yeah. Or Stephen Hawking, let's say. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Stephen Hawking was like 80% computer anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> he was more machine than man. <laughs> so... Pretty easy, yeah. <laughs> pretty easy decision <laughs> for me, Cambo. <laughs> um, okay, the, here's what I was thinking: is I don't think that's that's a good idea at all. Yeah, they should well, be doing science. What? They should be doing science. Do science. Don't do <laughs> politics. Politics will weigh you down. Um, no, but because I think like politicians should kind of just be everyday people. Yeah. In fact. You should probably have the, the a, a politician or a president or a prime minister or whatever as people that 
don't specialize in anything. Mm. So they have to be uh, totally dependent on research and advice from people that specialize in a particular area. Because yeah. sure, the scientist might be great at the sciencey stuff. Yeah. But when it comes to like economics, yeah, yeah. he might be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that the ideal president is somebody that's just an average Joe in the middle. Mm-hmm. Might have to have some, okay. A generally probably, smart. Generally smart, switch on. Mm-hmm. But and and probably look, there's there's leadership qualities. I understand. Probably uh, presidents, prime ministers has to make difficult decisions um, quite often. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes the difficult decision is doing what's worse yeah. for your country in order to profit. Yeah, yeah obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Profit is always at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's that's the person I think that we should be voting for yeah. i reckon i would totally if there was somebody who was like hey vote for me um i'm pretty good <laughs> i okay this is the person i'd vote for is you know how there's like a debate between uh you know presidents or yep. you know yep. parties is you have them come on and one guy has like another six people that come on with him <laughs> And then during the debate, they're like, ask questions. And the guy who has six people with this, they're like, I'm just going to pass this over to the person who knows <laughs> more about it. Yeah, that's true. Who I'm going to be advising. You know, he's going yeah. to be advising me. And uh, and they like don't even debate. <laughs> they just there and they make, point to the person who's going to make the- they, they make opening and closing remarks. Yeah, 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 that's right. And I think a great example of this is the New Zealand Prime Minister, Jacinda yeah. Ardern. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, in, there, there was a there was a little thing that they did on the Colbert Late Show, yeah, uh, where he went and visited New Zealand and he went and hung out with her, yeah. And I know that the US is a much bigger country, <coughs> yeah. Take all that into consideration, yeah. But she drives a normal sedan, <laughs> yeah. She drives a hybrid, actually, right. She lives in a suburban house, yeah. She's just a normal person, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that that and but a lot of the things that she she does are very mm. sensible. Yeah, very, yeah. very, uh, like measured, mm. and she has a lot of advisory, y- yeah, like in, in all the different things, yeah. And that's a good example of just an average person, yeah, that is in charge of the country. And I think it's funny, right? Because there's been campaigns like in Australia where we had somebody, uh, Kevin Rudd, mm-hmm. who was sort of pinned as like, oh, just your everyday, he came from, had a farmer background. Yep. They really like played that up. And it's like, but he kind of wasn't, yeah. you know? And I don't think there is anybody that is. It's like, they know that's the person that they need. It's, that's so it. they market everybody as like just another everyday person. In fact, kind of in a weird way, I think Trump represented that. Uh-huh. Because even though obviously he's a billionaire, it was, he kind of gave this air of like, he was. He seemed a little bit more maybe down to earth or relatable. Yeah, because he like whole, Hillary. His who, whole thing was like, "Oh, I'm not a politician. I'll just tell you." Yeah, how it is. yeah, exactly. But he like obviously he lives in a totally different world yeah, than anybody. Oh, yeah. he's, like, he's a billionaire. He's the like, least average man in the yeah, world. Yeah, 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 that's right. Um, but it's funny how that is. Um, that's all we want. Maybe. Oh my gosh, we we're pretty average people, can't we? Yeah, would we run together? Yes. Yeah, vote Nelson and Cambo. <laughs> yeah. Or which one will get in? Oh, we'll both do it. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it plays into our, yeah. we advise. We are advising each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah before every statement, we play the little yeah. the today I advise thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the whole we'll nation has say, to subscribe to the podcast. Yes. Uh, number one, obviously. Number two, uh, decrease taxes on milk. Yep. <laughs> Very you, important for our show cam. You, you, you guys will get that soon. <laughs> <laughs> or increase taxes as long as we get the milk for free. We go. <laughs> we, we, we whatever, really care, whatever will help the, the dairy industry in the long run is good, but they just need to cut us in with the free milk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, tax the poor. And tax the poor yeah. the most. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the trick. <laughs> That'll teach them to be so poor. What does the world hate? Poor people. Yeah. How you get rid of them? <laughs> tax tax them. them. <laughs> <laughs> can't live yeah. if you can't buy food, Gambo. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We have cut all taxes on milk. Unfortunately, 
this does mean we have to tax the poor more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, that's what you get when you vote for Nelson and Canberra. <laughs> should, should have thought about that when you did that in the first place. <laughs> you seem so normal. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple of down to earth guys. Um, okay, here's another one, Canberra. Uh, d- this is by Aura Art. You wake up to start your day. 40 bulls are surrounding your house. Mm. You can't stay inside your house forever. What is your plan? It's probably because we're hoarding all that milk. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Here is what I'm thinking. You want to know whether the bulls are hostile or not. Oh, they so could what, be friendly. What you do mm. is you order something to be delivered. <laughs> okay. Because then yeah. there's your canary going down the coal mine, so to speak. Yeah. The Uber Eats driver, <laughs> yeah. he rocks up. Yeah. If he's trampled to death, you're like, okay, yeah, yeah. they're hostile bulls. It- <laughs> <laughs> We've got that figured out it's, so far. It's sad Great. that he had to die, yeah. but he did obviously have to die. This is how I'd like the conversation to go. He yeah. pulls in. <laughs> you stick your head out the window. He winds down the window a little bit while yeah. the bulls are like surrounding his car. <laughs> and he's like, hey, these bulls are right. <laughs> and we say, yeah. <laughs> or it's like, you obviously tag deliver to door, but sometimes yeah. you get a message saying, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, no, no, no. Come to, to the, the door. door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll have to knock on the door. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Step one. Yep. We found out they're hostile. Okay. <laughs> we yeah, found yeah, out yeah. they're hostile boys. Okay. Um, uh, I, I, look, I'm not going to lie. Someone else is going to have to die now. <laughs> because then what I'd do is I'd order another thing to be delivered yeah. from Amazon. Yeah. But it's one of those prods that they kill cows uh, with okay. in the big gas chamber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He dies delivering it, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mount some kind of rescue mission for the pump. <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll just multiple delivery drivers. <laughs> That's good. People that, <laughs> like, hey, um, or, some guy dropped yeah. a cattle prod a few meters in front of his car. <laughs> Yeah, can that's good. Can, so Maybe I'm as good. a delivery note, being like, don't deliver it in the package, take it out of the package. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then when he gets here, I'm like, start using the prod <laughs> and come to the door. <laughs> Wait, why don't we just get them to That's what I'm saying. He he's clearing the the, the no, I say, don't even come to the door. I don't I really just, want yeah, the cattle yeah. prod. Or yeah, because you say clear out all the cattle. Yeah, yeah. And then bring it to the door and say, oh, this has been used. I'm not paying <laughs> Yeah, Amazon has a pretty good return policy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Take that back with you, mate. <laughs> yeah, our solutions are very <laughs> delivery-based. <laughs> I, I do like this. Thing. What about like, uh, you know how you can get pest control? Just don't tell them what it is. <laughs> There's this swarm outside my house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you come around? Uh, what, what are the creatures? I can't really identify them, to be yeah. honest with you. <laughs> you might need a net. <laughs> Shotgun. <laughs> How many of you guys work there? Yeah, bring all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you'll all need a shotgun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was it like rats? Yeah, it could be rats that are yeah. Yeah. <laughs> big. They're big. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is great. Yeah. This can be. It's a solution. Do you know what the best thing is? If we hold up inside, mm. I've still got toilet paper left over. Yeah. From- well, that's the thing. If we've been self-isolated, yeah. those balls are waiting. <laughs> we should. Will, will they wait 14 days? Oh. That's the that's the quarantine period for the, the coronavirus. It's just a waiting game. Yeah. I can self-isolate. Yeah, exactly. And if delivery drivers have to die so I eat, so be it. <laughs> I like that there's, there's like it's corpses and cars. <laughs> <laughs> of all the delivery drivers. The street's just littered with corpses and cars. Um, it's a good plan, though. Yeah. I like it. Um, there's another way to uh, get rid of poor people. <laughs> Those people relying yeah, on yeah. delivering stuff. They do Uber Eats for a bit of extra money. <laughs> That's um, the first mistake, being poor. <laughs> Idiots. Uh, all right, Kembo, let's get into Today I Advice. So now it's time for Today I Learned. Today I Learned. And also sometimes advice. This advice is by Magnolia2987. How to get back stolen AirPods. My sister's AirPods were taken today. We know where they are. We have an address for the person who took them. We don't know who lives there, but we know their address. What now? 
This is where the 40 balls really come in handy. <laughs> okay, think. yeah, yeah. If you can control the balls, then oh. ultimately you win. Yeah. Some kind of Ant-Man style, you know how he controls the ants? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. But with balls? You control the balls. You can control 40 balls. That'd be way better than controlling ants. It would be better. I've only just and realized, is Ant-Man a shit superhero? <laughs> but he's so funny. That's how he gets away with it. Yeah, he you're is. Like, oh, you're a bit of a charming rogue. Yeah, he is funny. But we haven't met Bull Man yet. Bull, Bull Man. He, he is, could be a bit of a laugh. He, he, he's a superhero <laughs> I think needs to be introduced. Yeah. And uh, we, we will create it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's a mild-mannered. Like a mild mannered office worker, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But he can control forty bulls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Can he also hilariously be a milkman? That's good. Like that's his yeah, that's yeah. his day job. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> he rocks up to properties, yeah. trying to get some stolen AirPods back. Get the uh, bulls in there. How would you get AirPods back if you know where they are? I think a full blown raid. He's pretty good. Kick down the okay. door yeah. in SWAT gear. Maybe one of those battering rams. Charge in, screaming, screaming, everyone on the ground. Grab the AirPods, leave. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think the first thing you need to do is to assess what people are like. They mm. could be lunatics, yep. Cambo. They could be bloodthirsty. Mm. Send a delivery driver out. <laughs> <laughs> now, he- Order some a pizza for them mm-hmm. in... If the delivery driver comes back out, we'll ask him what they're like. <laughs> <laughs> then we order the cattle prod again. Yeah. Comes to useful. <laughs> yeah. So we've kept it originally. We yeah. haven't returned it. Uh, I think we've returned it. <laughs> and then we've ordered, ordered it again. Ordered it again. We'll the same Amazon one. driver comes back. <laughs> He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> You guys originally returned this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, There's a psychological warfare you could do. Because, yeah. you know... Um, I have AirPods. I'm familiar with how they work. Yeah. And normally you can, if you went outside their house, you could probably mm. connect them to your phone. Yeah. So then you can just keep changing their music. Oh, yeah. That's so really good. They sit down and listen to a little bit of music. You change it every time. Can you make, you can make a phone call. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> you just keep ringing up somewhere. Yeah. And they have to keep talking to them. I think, um, <clears throat> or give them a conscience. Conscience, perhaps. Mm-hmm. You call up saying that you're God or something like that. <laughs> and and then when they question it, you're like, well, how else would somebody contact you through mm. the AirPods mysteriously? <laughs> <laughs> and then that's actually what if you disconnect, if you like connect AirPods to something else, doesn't it like disconnect from the other thing? I mean, I've got my AirPods connected to a couple of different devices. Oh. So I just have to switch them. Okay. Okay, so look, look, yeah, ma- logistics. Ma- <laughs> yeah, maybe if they go into the back end and like deliberately. Yeah, maybe it yeah. would. It, yeah, maybe, yeah. You requires could, you, a bit of effort. You probably could disconnect someone, I guess. Okay, right. But like automatically, unless someone's deliberately done that, which if they've stolen AirPods, maybe they have. Yeah. In, okay. Yeah, but yeah, unless they've done that, you could probably just keep reconnecting to them. I think the other thing is maybe just keep erecting large signs in their front yard, being like, "I know you have my AirPods." Yeah. And he takes them down, put one up the next day. I think so. And like and like all down the street, so the neighbors all know. Yeah. In two houses time, he has my AirPods. Okay. AirPods in here, big arrow. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, my AirPods, obviously. Here's what I'm thinking. People have been concerned with uh, health mm-hmm. recently yep. due to a certain outbreak. Mm. Uh, we don't talk about it on this podcast, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I said before, but that's not the point. Um, what if... We went out, Mm -hmm. we dressed up as doctors, lab coats, went to the front door Mm -hmm. and said, "Uh, excuse me, sir, we believe that um, you may be using some AirPods of somebody who has ear ervitis and you need to hand them over immediately. Otherwise, you might get ear ear ervitis. Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh, Yep. I'm and, liking this. And really start panicking them. Yeah. Like, we should have full-blown, I'm mm. talking about, like, masks on and stuff. Yeah, 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 quarantine suits, yeah. Quarantine suits. And we say, we're going to need the AirPods. Drag them out of the house. Mm-hmm. 
put them in the back of a van, <laughs> fill the van up with milk. Can. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, <laughs> the, the cherry on top of this <laughs> is once he hands over the AirPods, yeah. he pour a pitcher of milk on his head, so you got milk breaks. <laughs> yeah, milk breaks. And we run away. Yeah. And he's like, how about the yogurt? <laughs> and he goes back inside his house. We've had other people fill up his house with milk. <laughs> Still get milk prank. Yeah. Get milk prank forever. <laughs> Is this our dumbest reoccurring joke? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay. But I, I like the idea of scamming them. Yeah. The yeah, yeah. Being like, we need specifically to... just those. He's like, should we, anything else? Should I, I've got like, a, do, does my phone need to go? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, give us that. Yeah, busy. Yeah, busy. Yeah. What else you got? Yeah. PlayStation? Yeah, yeah. yeah TV. Well, that's oh, boy, you haven't been touching that, have you? <laughs> <laughs> you know what TV is? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like those Nikes. Good kicks. Yeah. <laughs> what size are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, too big. Never mind. <laughs> They're, They're probably, probably fine. fine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll go back later and fill them with milk. <laughs> Such a dumb joke. Uh, uh, that'll never get old. Yeah. I want someone just to leave us a rating being like, it was a good show, but I did have to unsubscribe <laughs> when they kept bringing up milk breaks. Because I'm lactose intolerant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh. Here's another one, Gambit. Mm-hmm. Um, this, uh, <laughs> this is by Mothman. I have about $3 million in prop money. What should I do with it? Give it to us. Give it to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll try and spend it when we order pizzas. <laughs> and, uh, Here's the thing. Prop money doesn't hold up one-on-one transactions, right? Looks too fake. It only holds up okay. wrapped in bundles to look like large amounts oh. of cash. So you need to make a large purchase. Okay. Drug deal some kind of shady gun deal in a car park, things that you see big bundles of money in a suitcase being used for. That's actually not a bad idea. Yeah. I'm just putting it out there because you're only getting the criminals back. Yeah. Um, I, I would I would happily con regular good folk. It's yeah. just harder with fake money because yeah. you need it in a suitcase in bundles. What do people want right now that we could give them sort of illegal, you know, like mm. under the table mm. and that they'd be willing to accept, you know. Oh, no, wait, we need to buy something for Yeah, we them. need to buy something. So, yeah, yeah. So I forgot need? the whole premise of this <laughs> <laughs> as I was talking. Yeah. But here's the thing. You need to somehow, I think it only works because if you agree, say we agree upon, what was it, $3 million, right? Yeah. We've got some illegal weapons that we're buying, say. Yeah. We need to somehow, we can't be like, here's the $3 million because the first thing they'll do is try and count it to make sure it's all there. Yeah. It needs to be spur of the moment. Be like, see this? It's a briefcase full of cash. That's $3 million cash right there. I'll, I'll take that. So they're, they're, all, they're like on the back foot. Okay. They're like, oh my God, I'm suddenly being presented with $3 million. Okay. But if they know $3 million is coming, they're going to want to count it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see I'm maximizing saying. our... I'm not going to say that they won't be like... They, they'll think ahead and think, yeah. oh, maybe I'll... But the more you can put them yeah, psychologically yeah. on the back foot, the better. I've got this, campaign. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, what's something that you that you might like really want? Uh, uranium. Okay. I won't tell you why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm need. working on something. No need. Okay. So we get, uh, let's say, this is some probably very rich mine person. Mm-hmm. Uh, mining person, we kidnap their daughter, mm-hmm. uh, and then we set up a phone call, and we say, "We want to make a trade with you. Mm-hmm. We'll give you three million dollars and your daughter yeah. <laughs> for some uranium." <laughs> that then we meet up. That guy's going to be very pressured to take the $3 million. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 I can streamline this. Okay. We say, we'll give you $3 million and your daughter if you give us $5 million. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want $2 million. We want an entirely different $5 million. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
I th- cause the thing is, we're profited two extra million dollars here now. So. Oh my god! And then we don't have to get rid of that uranium. <laughs> it's much harder to get rid of. Yes. Oh my god! But that's brilliant because that guy's like, <laughs> I'm only out two million. <laughs> Till he gets home and tries to count it. Uh. Jerk. <laughs> Yeah, because you wouldn't like in during the swap, you would not count that money. You'd be like, "I'm sure it's all here. I don't want to. I don't want this to go any longer. Release my daughter. Need to protect my daughter. <laughs> so you can grab this briefcase and go." <sighs> Jake's announced when we get home, it's all oh, no, no. <laughs> But you know what? We didn't lose anything, did we? We didn't have the three million to start with, and we don't have the five million now. If it's anything, we're wasted a weekend. <laughs> If anything, the next person we can uh, we can ask for seven million. <laughs> one day, one day it'll work, and we just need to work. Idiot won't put we we money just in. needed to work once. Okay. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Um. Ah, that's funny. Okay. Um. Now I say, Cambo. We should get into shower thoughts. Shower thoughts, 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 shower thoughts, 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 shower thoughts, 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 shower thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. This shower thought is by Elamy Ella Ella May. Ella May. Our skin is the only organ we can get to personalize and the only organ we can compliment without sounding creepy. I think you can compliment people's eyes. So it's like you see that there. Oh, huh, good eyes. Nice eyes. Yeah. Beautiful eyes. Yeah. And put contacts in them. Customized. This oh. but per- who, who is this person? Who is this <laughs> idiot <laughs> who didn't think of the most obvious oh one? Oh, my God. A teeth organs? Nah, probably not. No. Never mind. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't get bones. I didn't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lump of calcium. Um, yes, but anyway, quite good one. I mean, I have kidney stones. Does that count? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. have we wasted? Neither of us have have um, got any tattoos or anything, so we haven't customized our skin at all. Which you're a video gamer. It's all about customizing skins, is it not, in the video game world? That, that's why I don't need to do it in the real world. Oh, right. I do it to all my <laughs> avatars. I have a Sims character. You, you, you live... Looks like a goth. <laughs> do, what, but the thing is, you can try out all your different things and whatever works, maybe you'll adopt. Yeah. Because you, you dressed up your Sim as a goth, you're like, mm, don't like it. Don't like it. <laughs> Glad I didn't commit to this. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um I play Dungeons and Dragons. That's even better, Cambo. Mm. You can just imagine them having I Yeah, that's tattoos. true. I mean, I, you can I, imagine yourself having tattoos, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at your arms and you're like, whoa. Oh, my God. I could have, cool. I could have a cool dragon on this <laughs> arm. <laughs> um, I want to point out that my D&D character definitely doesn't have tattoos. Because um, I have designed the least... Yeah. The least exciting D&D character possible. Yes. Ben Thompson. Ben Thompson, yeah. Yeah. He well. is an accountant. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> At least he's good for something, Cambo. Yeah, and he's slightly overweight. Yeah, yeah. And a coward. I like anyway. the idea that he's a bad accountant as well, actually. No, no. He's a very good accountant. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's, oh, he's good got numbers. something going for yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> um, also a huge dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Massive asshole. Um, no, no. I'm saying he's got a huge dick. Oh. Yeah. Because people Did wouldn't not. think he would. D- right, That's right. the biggest surprise about Ben Thompson. He's packing. And it's tattooed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just two big surprises at once. Um, I was thinking, how about how about we start this? Because I think it's a bit, um, it's shallow of us humans to to only be able to complement the one organ. Mm. Um, you know, being skin or eyes. We've got two now. Yep. I think what we should do is. Go up to people, give them a bit of a squeeze. Go, mm. great kidneys. Yeah, yeah, good kidneys. Great kidneys. I feel like sometimes as well, if people are very impressive with holding their breath, yeah, you could be like, good lungs. Yeah, this I don't know, mate. Those, uh, mate, those if, lungs. Asthma, shit lungs. Uh, <laughs> I say that to everyone I meet with asthma. <laughs> <laughs> shit lungs, mate. I don't think you understand asthma. No, shit lungs. <laughs> 
It is. It does show signs of weakness. Yep. Like Which, people with glasses. I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's true. Yeah, I yeah. think if anything, we should be using this to judge people more. Yeah, it's not about, about complimenting organs. It's about criticizing organs. Or not. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Someone's appendix first. <laughs> <laughs> shit <piece> appendix. <laughs> <laughs> what a piece of shit. <laughs> Why don't you just have a good appendix? Get one that doesn't burst. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. Then there's going to be people that get implants of appendix. <laughs> so that if somebody yeah. gives them a squeeze, yeah. like, you're all right, you still got yeah. one. <laughs> Quick question. Do you have your appendix? Yep. Has it burst? No, nah, still got it. <laughs> all right, you're okay. All right, all right. <laughs> we'll do this quick cat scan and just, <laughs> just test that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it appears to still be there. He's sneaker. He knows it's fake. <laughs> It'd be good. All good donations will go way down. <laughs> if they would go way down. <laughs> oh, my brother yeah. need, needs a kidney. Are well, you going to give him a kidney, are you? You'll only have one kidney. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, don't worry, I won't. <laughs> You're right. My, my I wonder bro- how much we personally could affect the mortality rate of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Just by <laughs> encouraging people not to give up <laughs> organs. <laughs> Based on vanity. Or vanity <laughs> alone. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great idea. Yeah. Here's another one, Kim. This is by Matt Carnes. Everything is a weapon. It's just how useful you can be with it. That's true. I think John Wick has proved this many times. <gasps> it's funny that you say that. Just the other day, I watched John Wick 3. Mm. Oh, my God. That was an amazing cool. film. Kills a guy with a book. He kills a guy with a book? Yep. That was... Really cool. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, this is awesome. You kind of even know it's going that way. Oh, yeah, yeah. But um, I was waiting and waiting. That whole, because he's in a library, like, he'll definitely use a book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what um, got me actually in the film was he goes into uh, some stables, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is funny. You know, somebody's going to die from a horse. Yeah. <laughs> right. The first, I think, like, the first guy he fights dies from the horse. Mm-hmm. Because uh, John Wick, like, slaps it and does a big kick, yep. breaks the guy's neck. Yep. What killed me is that the very next guy he fights, he kills in the same yeah. way with this, a different horse. This is what I like about John Wick 3. <laughs> yeah. They have this mentality of being like, that was cool. Yeah. Do it again. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it happens a few times in that movie. Something cool will happen. And yeah. you're like, that's cool. <gasps> It did it again. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's like, I don't know. That one I thought was really lame. I was like, you could get away with that once. Yeah. As being like a fanciful thing that John Wick does. It's hilarious, kind of. But then the fact he did it again, you're like, wait, are you trying to say like John Wick is that good that he can do it every time? He's, he's, like, he's a horse whisperer. <laughs> he is a horse whisperer. And the horses are okay with murder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Obviously, right. as well. They need to be on board. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but- I remember, this is just on a tangent now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, when I was watching that movie, it was myself, Stacy, big Keanu Reeves fan. In yeah. fact, she has the signed Keanu Reeves poster here in this room. Yeah. Uh, and then sitting next to us was a young girl. She's probably about 23, 24 ish. Yeah. Um, not very into the John Wick films. Yeah. But she was kind of sitting there next to us. There's a scene in which John Wick throws. Just so many knives into a man. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does see. <laughs> and we were laughing yes, and laughing and having a great laugh. time. And then we turned and I've never seen a look of such horror <laughs> on her <laughs> face. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like, where did he get so many knives from? Yeah, it was really funny. It was a funny, <laughs> it was film. funny film. Like, I thought one and two were kind of like crazy action packed, maybe a couple of funny moments. Mm. Joey three, I thought, was a comedy. Yeah. It was just about how ridiculous he. There's a gunfight on a horse, and then later there's a sword fight on a motorbike. Yes. <laughs> That's all you got to know about that film. And sometimes you're like, why don't at these points they have guns? <laughs> By the way, the, so- the, the gunfight on the horse and the sword fight on the motorbike. They're one after the other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's in the first 20 to 30 minutes of that film. Yeah, yeah, it's great. That's not even the climactic action sequence. I thought it was funny as well as I was watching. There was a moment where it wasn't an action scene. One of the, like, three. Yeah. And, um, You're bored. And I, and I was bored. No, Keanu Reeves is, like, saying something. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, 
Not a good actor. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got to point it out to me again, <laughs> which is so bad. I've never, I've never li- liked somebody so much, I, but just had zero faith in <laughs> their ability to do what they're paid so much money to do. Yeah. Um, he's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. Anyway. We're pro Keanu here. We're pro Keanu. So, yes, everything is weapon, even horses. This is by Chatticus 116 Gravity is always trying to take your pants off. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to put this one in, actually. This is so dumb. Um, Not wrong, though. I think it makes me feel a little bit more sexy. The gravity is always trying to undress you. Yeah. Just like just I'm constantly trying to be yeah. undressed. Although, it's also trying to pull my top down. So, to cover the dick. Yeah. <laughs> he just wants to see Ooh, your sweet calves. Let's, ch- let's check that out. Oh, no, not that much. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, um, it, yeah, so a bit, gravity technically is also always trying to crush you into the earth. <laughs> yes. That is a problem. So it seems like a psychopath that's trying to pull your pants down and then crush you into the earth. Yeah. Well, I mean, those people exist already. Really, isn't that just a metaphor for life? What people that pull people's pants down and crush people in the earth? Yeah, <laughs> they, do they exist? Everybody has to face those people. At one point or <laughs> They're deep in, in the their Amazon. Life. You've never heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> they called the <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Anyway, here's another one, Cambo. This is by Aussie Loads. Uh, uh, you're more likely to trust someone who is 99% sure rather than someone who <laughs> says they are 100% sure. Yeah, it's about um, humility, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like uh, on the weather app that we use, it only ever says, it never says 0% chance of showers. It yeah. only ever says 5% chance of showers. And at that point, you're like, well, it's not going to rain. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's obviously that it's like, if it does rain, they'll be like, we didn't say it definitely wouldn't. Yeah. We can't. Yeah. And someone that's like, oh, look, I'm 99% sure. You're like, I know that you're actually 100% sure. Yeah. But you're being, you know, you're yeah. being humble. And even if you are wrong for any freak reason, you have that 1%. Yeah. That's they, just smart. When you are wrong. Do you know what? Now, just all the time, I'm going to say I'm 99% sure. <laughs> If I'm trying to garner people's trust, mm-hmm. like if I'm like, hey, Cambo, come into this room yeah. and you say, is it filled with milk? <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm 99% sure it's not. <laughs> and you'll be like, oh, well, that's yeah. fair enough. And if someone ever tells you they're 110% sure, slap them across the face. Yes, I know. I hate people that get over. What are they doing? I, don't know. I bet their kidneys suck. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think... Uh, <clears throat> so, just going back to the weather thing. Yep. Why does anybody trust a weatherman? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's. I think it's just because you you want to be somewhat informed, right? Yeah. But here's the thing: mm-hmm. even if someone tells you something that's wrong, you can pass that information off, and if it's correct, you look smart by proxy. Yeah. And if it's wrong, you can be like, "Bloody weatherman." Yeah. See what I'm saying. Okay. It's 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 removing culpability from you. I wouldn't be surprised if all weathermen don't actually have any sort of science background at all. (laughs) And they're just regular people that are like, we know the seasons. Yeah. We know roughly what the week ahead is going to be just based on like, if it's sunny, it's if it's in summer, yeah. it's like, look, it's probably going to be pretty sunny for a while. And look, there's probably some there's satellite be images some cloudy of days. Big, satellite images of big clouds. Like, that cloud might rain. Might rain. Yeah. Big we'll cloud might rain. We'll make that a 25% chance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? Yeah. Nobody's going to... If you if you don't get that percentage chance... I mean, I'm just saying, it's like a fail... You I can't think, lose in the job of weatherman, is what I'm saying. I think the because percentage you know, is just chance... Like, well, it, we had a rough idea of what the weather was going to be like. I think the percentage chance thing has really screwed weather people into being wrong. Yeah. If they're like, will it rain tomorrow? It could. Yeah. And then maybe in summer, will it rain tomorrow? Look, it probably won't. Yeah. Just generalize. Generalize everything. And then you can't really be that mad at them because, oh, they said it probably wouldn't, but it, it did. But they never said it definitely wouldn't. They, never, yeah. they didn't say it was a 10% chance because then you're holding them to a figure. This is perfect. Yeah. We well, could be weather, man. Yeah, vague weather. <laughs> it's a new app. <laughs> vague, <laughs> vague weather. Should I take a jacket? Wouldn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I like the idea that, yeah, you, you ask it questions <laughs> <laughs> and it just does not give definitive answers <laughs> at <No>. all. <laughs> Is it going to rain? Especially, maybe. Especially is it going to be sunny? Mm. Especially if it's a, this is something that Australians do a lot and that maybe we can implement. Yeah. Like, is it cold? Pff, not hot. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you that much. It's not hot. <laughs> yeah. That's true. But then if it is hot. See? You, yeah, it's not cold. You <laughs> no, it's not cold. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> uh, all right, Kembo. That's it for chat, though. It's like, let's get into pod napping. <laughs> Podnapping. This is podnapping. <laughs> we did you forget we were, did you forget we, we were on? Uh, my things up is not. Are you trying to pull up the thing I sent you? Oh, Quick. yep. Uh, this is po- hey, Camber, you explain it. Okay, uh, this is pod napping, the segment where we nap a pod. Uh, we take a copy, topic of conversation or a segment from a different podcast, and then we do it ourselves. Or sometimes we make up a segment all by ourselves. Uh, we actually have one here that was sent into us. Uh, yes. Sent in to us by Hallie. Yeah. Uh, and she was mentioning the uh, podcast a Beach Too Sandy, Water Too Wet. And. Oh, weird. Okay. Hang on. Um, <laughs> I've sent Nelson a document, but it's locked him out of it. Yes. Uh, that's right. I'll, 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 I'll pass this between us. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, Hallie sent us this, uh, this uh, suggestion uh, Beach Too Sandy, Water Too Wet. Mm-hmm. Uh, in which they go online and they find one star reviews for. It, there's different topics, like different themes, like McDonald's or yeah. whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Now, we actually did something similar just purely by coincidence uh, two yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, we're doing uh, one-star reviews of famous landmarks. Uh, but I didn't want to half-ass it for Hallie, and she suggested this, so I wanted to do something else. Yeah. Something that I quite like is uh, classic cinema. Yeah. So I thought, let's find some classic films and then find out who just doesn't get it. Yeah. Who yeah. doesn't get it. But- before that, I thought I'd start with this one star review. Yeah. Oh my God, such an annoying voice and laugh. Couldn't bear to listen, or to carry on listening. The boring talk of cards and the most irritating laugh put me off further listening. I know that's a one star review for Sounds Reddit like on a Reddit. Shit. <laughs> shit that, joke. that is a one star review that we have received. Do you like I thought it's only that? fair if we're taking shots at great cinema. Let people know that we got a one star review. As well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even even we're not the best. We're only ninety nine percent the best. <laughs> yeah, 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 huh? yeah, huh? yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually, I they said that we spoke about cards. Yeah, I look, don't remember us talking about that. I look, think they're reviewing the wrong podcast. Uh, we but the thing is, we could have because sometimes we earlier this episode someone brought something up. We're like, did we talk about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, that's true. We don't know. Um, but he was welcome to Patrick. They meant to do it. <laughs> Also, I want to know whose laugh, or maybe who's both laugh? of our it's laughs. Both of our- I don't like mine. I don't like yours either. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, okay, so I thought uh, we'll, we'll do one by one. Uh, okay. So uh, we've got a couple of classic cinema movies, yep. and I filtered them uh, to just be the one-star reviews, and I've just picked out certain one-star reviews. Okay. So the first one I've got here is for The Godfather. Okay. Generally seen as a cinematic classic, a masterpiece, if you will. Yes. Not to this person. They said, yet another movie that uses animal cruelty to make a point. Bloody, disgusting, glamorizes and glorifies the criminal lifestyle. (laughs) The viewer is initially drawn in sympathizing with the crime boss and how he is just a family man who wants respect. The only thing that may have been accurate and not exaggerated was the cops on the take. Oh, (laughs) okay. I see. So that's... Funny. I, I love that. Uh, I think the iconic scene from The Godfather, horse's head. In the Is bed. that what they're referring to as animal cruelty? I mean, do they think they killed a real <laughs> horse, <laughs> or just that like the idea? Because it's meant to be a horrific scene. Yeah, yeah. it's like a, it's a horrific scene, but yeah. they're like oh, another example where a horse's head wins. <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't know if that's necessarily true. Happens all the time. But I, I love the idea that they're just like, like it, they think that that one scene is representative of the theme of the movie as well. Yeah, There's yeah. Just being like, the theme of the movie is obviously that animal cruelty works. Yeah, and yeah. that's fine. Yeah, but also I think people that think that, I mean, especially movies like I would say Goodfellas or The Godfather have sometimes been criticized for glorifying the mob. Yeah. Do they not watch the movies until the end? 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what I always want to know. It always ends badly. Yeah, because you like at first you was like, oh yeah, they're getting all the money in, and like mm. they they got, got the pretty girl and the nice car or whatever. But I've never seen a mob movie that's like, and the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he lived happily ever after, <laughs> like that. No, they always pay for it. Actually, you know what? In a in a kind of weird way, oh, uh, it doesn't really work. But um, in Breaking Bad, uh, Jesse in the end. Okay, he has some. Turns out he has some horrific experiences. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get through it unscathed. Unscathed. But in the end, he gets away. Yeah. And he's, my, he's my, only barely broken as a human. My, yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, my my dad is sort of one for, in particular, or he, he loved Breaking Bad, but I think there are some movies out there where they do make yeah, yeah. the the illegal lifestyle glamorous. Yeah. And my dad's one person that's like, oh, I don't really like that. Which is funny because my dad's not normally that type of person. Yeah. But I think that he I, just... I'm, I'm always of the mindset that I don't have to agree with the art that I enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Like I can watch a movie. Uh, there's a movie called Dragged Across Concrete. Yeah. Horrible movie, but I actually really enjoy it. I don't agree whatsoever with the characters and what they do. I think everything they do is despicable. Yeah. But I think it's a well-made, interesting movie. Yeah, yeah. And, but I think I don't think you necessarily have to agree with what you're watching as well. Yeah. Now, question. Have you seen Citizen Kane? Uh, I don't think I have okay. actually, but I have seen the Simpsons episode. Well, there's a slight spoiler alert for Citizen Kane in this review. I'm just going to warn people okay. of that. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, Citizen Kane, Rosebud is the sled. There, now you don't have to watch this trash, <laughs> trash a terrible masterpiece in quotation marks that no one should have to watch. The only time anyone should have to watch this movie is for a film class. The pacing was slower than I can act. Uh, uh, than <laughs> okay, sorry. Let me read this. Yeah, with, well, the, the, thing with about- the correct punctuation. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing about one star reviews. I find that normally I have to kind of correct this. <laughs> yeah, the pacing was slower than. I can't actually think of anything that would be slower. <laughs> Anyways, acting was horrible and the plot was all over the place. It was just an overall terrible movie, even for that period. Just like special effects today can't make a bad movie good, no amount of innovative cinematography can make this movie as great as movie snobs say it is. Yeah. That seems amazing. I mean, I haven't seen it, as I mentioned. Mm. But the idea... It, would have to be right that if so many people believe it to be a great movie, you might just be wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but also, even though he says, look, like, even for the time, mm-hmm. but I think the reason that Citizen Kane, like Citizen Kane doesn't hold up to Avengers Endgame when it comes to thrilling adventure. Yeah, yeah. And it never will. Yeah, yeah. But the point of Citizen Kane and why it is so revered is he said, oh, the pacing's all over the place. It was one of the first films that really shifted around like film narrative structure yeah. like it did. Yeah. And that was groundbreaking. Yeah. It was one of the first films that like it, it pioneered so many things that have now been done millions and millions of times and done better and better yeah. than Citizen Kane. But I think the historical significance of something doing something like that. I'd love for that person to then say what other movie from the same time period yeah, they yeah, think yeah. is better. Yeah, yeah. Go back to the 1930s yeah. and show me a better example yeah. of any of it. Yeah. <laughs> Also, he Orson Welles wrote, directed, and starred in that movie when he was like twenty six. Huh. So also consider that. <laughs> consider that. Okay, I've got a. Here's the next one: Shawshank Redemption. Oh. Uh, I picked this because it's the highest rated film on IMDb. All right. So I thought this is it the one that people love the most. It always fluctuates with uh, Pulp Fiction, doesn't it? I feel no, like no, it no. Used the, to- the Godfather is the is the second. Is it really? Yep. I could have sworn it was. Pulp Actually, Fiction. no. Sorry, Godfather Part Two. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, Pulp Fiction is number four. I think. All oh, right. But yeah, they, they they do sometimes shift every now and then. But Shawshank, generally speaking, more often than not, will be number one. Yeah. Uh, now this person has some kind of fundamental uh, uh, tone issues with Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. But also, I think it reads a lot into what they believe as a person. Yeah. Okay. A mishandled combination of melodrama and realism that self destructs. This film wants to have it both ways. At times, it tries to be gritty and realistic, yet also attempts to move us with implausible or impossible plot contrivances. 
Are we supposed to take it seriously when the prisoners, many of whom in prison for murder and other serious felonies, are far better people than the prison guards and wardens? Is it supposed to induce dramatic catharsis or laughter when the protagonist ends up wealthy on a Caribbean island when the corrupt warden is punished? These types of things just don't happen in reality. Such a fanciful, unlikely conclusion might suit a film with a more whimsical or fantastical tone, but this film makes itself grounded in a realism, and for this reason, its conclusion and many of the more sentimental moments just can't be taken seriously. My heart wasn't moved. Instead, my eyes rolled. Wow. <laughs> I have a question. Do they think Andy Dufresne did the murder? Yeah, <laughs> because I, I guess so. They said that. Didn't they mention that the the guilty protagonist? But like, even even Red Red admits in the film. Yeah, I did it. I I I murdered. Um. Yeah. Right. But I love the idea that he, they're like they said that some of the guards in Warden were corrupt. That never happens. <laughs> Yeah, like the idea that authority figures can't be yeah. corruptible or bad in any way, or that people that have done something bad in the past can't be redeemable in yeah, any way. Yeah, exactly. It's like or think- like that they are criminals. That's actually a really interesting point. I think a lot of people think that if you've committed a crime, or we've like led to believe a lot that if you if somebody's committed a cr- crime, they are a criminal forever. Their yeah. their entire behavior is like of an evil person that you couldn't even imagine in your head. Yeah. But that's not normal. Well, Some uh, people are psychopaths, but there's like normal people that have done a very extremely bad thing, albeit, but you know. And prison isn't supposed to lock people away forever. It's supposed to rehabilitate people <laughs> yeah. to rejoin society. And yes, there are cases where people are locked away forever, deemed irredeemable yeah, yeah. but the idea is if you rob a bank yeah. you go and spend 10 years of your life and you're supposed to redeem yourself yeah. to join society again yeah but also i think the point of the movie is that even if you've had a sordid past it doesn't mean you're a bad person yeah and even if you're an authority figure it doesn't mean you're a good person yeah that's kind of the point yeah yeah um okay here's that one from forrest gump um i mean it's not from forrest gump it's about forrest gump I only give this movie one star because I can't give it negative five. I saw this film as a poor excuse to make fun of the handicap. (laughs) Oh, my God. Having a father that's handicapped, I really didn't find that. Wait, what? I'm so confused. I I really didn't find much about this film to my liking. First, you've got Jenny, who shields Forrest in the beginning, shuns him through most of the picture. Then after realizing she's got A, nowhere else to turn, and B, that she's dying, she returns to him. His friend Bubba is slow, just like him. What a crazy idea. His lieutenant, Dan, only really becomes his friend after he himself loses his legs. And that's it. Yeah. So what? <laughs> why is this? Th- okay. So this person mm-hmm. wanted to see the film to make fun of the handicap. No, no. They're saying that this film is just an excuse to make fun of handicapped people. And as someone oh that has God, a handicapped yeah. father. I'm so sorry. I just read it. Incorrectly. They don't think that, that, it, that it works. Yeah. Uh, again, I think a lot of these are misreading what the film is meant to represent. I think that Forrest yeah. Gump is supposed to represent that even though he has a mental handicap, which he does, yeah. he is just a good person and yeah. overcomes that exactly. by being purely good. It's not about his handicap at all, no. actually. It's, in it's, fact, it's, it's about how it doesn't hold him back. Yeah. He achieves so much. Yeah, exactly. It's about all these people that don't have it that seem to be screwing up yeah. and have screwed up lives in multiple different ways. You know, like Lieutenant Dan yep. feeling like he needs to die in battle because mm. his father did and his father's father or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, that's a messed up way to be. Yeah. And Forrest is like, no, like, just live. And, and, and be. it's also <laughs> a lot about how people don't believe in Forrest because he is mentally handicapped and how he proves everyone wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I reckon it was just the fact that this person thought that it was meant to be making fun of him from the beginning, probably. Yeah. That from that point onwards, 
would just read everything the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm sure well, that's well, what would Once happen. you're in that mindset, I guess everything you see yeah. is just from that mindset. Because I think there are some films, not that I can really think of any necessarily, that probably play that having a handicapped person up where it's yeah. like, oh, you're maybe doing this for the wrong reasons. Yeah. But I felt like Forrest Gump was pretty tasteful because yeah. it's it's really sort of not about no his handicap at all, really. Yeah. Like that's kind of the point of the movie. Yeah, anyway. like, like, yeah, yeah. No. Anyway, I thought I'd finish on this one. Uh, this is uh, about Parasite, which okay. is kind of the movie of the moment. Yeah. It's the movie that... People say it came out of nowhere to win the best picture. Yeah. But also it had been in cinemas for seven months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it came out of nowhere, but it had been around for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and foreign language film from Korea. Uh, and very good film. Yep. Uh, but I think the problem is people were very upset that it won the the, the film, uh, the best picture. Yeah. Because one, it wasn't in English. And two, people maybe hadn't heard of it. And three, it beat Joker. Yeah, which there was a certain section of the internet, yeah, very vocally in support of Joker. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is a one-star review of Parasite. I don't believe the accolades this film is getting are genuine. I am someone who watches a lot of foreign TV and films and stuff, and have no issue with subtitles. This was just bad. It's for Korean audiences. Any Westerner who claims they love this is lying. <laughs> You're just not getting this movie. It's the equivalent of something like American Pie for Korean audiences. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. So, but also he's saying, like, it contradicts itself. Yeah. It says, you don't understand it. It's made for Korean audiences. Yeah. So you don't appreciate it. Also, <laughs> in Korean audiences, this is like American Pie. Yeah. They think it sucks. <laughs> Yeah. Well, which is it? Yeah, that's a... Uh, yeah. So, and re shit. reading through the Parasite reviews, there's a lot of reviews being like, uh, it's a conspiracy. Yeah. No one really likes Parasite. <laughs> okay. But you need to seem like you do like Parasite uh, because that makes you cool. I haven't seen it, but I no. think it's a really good movie. Well, here's the thing. Be. I have seen it. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> And then, when, like, here's the thing. They go, you wink pa once. Parasite. If, you, if you're, oh my God, guys, <laughs> he winked. <laughs> Parasite technically lost me money, right? Yeah. I had money on 1917 to win Best Picture. Yeah. But when Parasite won, I was like, huh, cool. Yeah. That was really cool. good. Yeah, yeah. Lost my house, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go, Hallie. Uh, we haven't listened to too much of Beach Too Sandy, Water Too Wet, but hopefully that is... Somewhat of a substitute, if not better. Probably better. Probably better. Probably better. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. Um, hey, AMA. Did, let's get into <laughs> the AMA. I feel like I was going to do something else and I forgot. Let's get into AMA, uh, where listeners of the show, just like you, listener, can write in and ask us anything you want. Uh, okay, so I've got one here from, uh, where we go? Uh, Varen, I think that's how you pronounce the yep. name. Yeah, sure. Uh, if it's not, please correct us by rating us five stars. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the rating, obviously tell us how to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, hello, guys. I've been listening to your podcast for a day or two now, and I love it. I'm used to podcasts about subreddits like r slash entitled parents, etc. I'm writing you from the US. I don't know why you need to know this, but I am from Australia. And I have some questions for you guys. One, I listened to the music Soulmate and heard that you guys got into classical music. When I heard post-rock and explosions in the sky, I lit up. I also love them. I wanted to ask uh, what your favorite song is from them and also if you've heard of Mogwai or Sigaros. My favorite is Birth and Death of the Day by Explosions in the Sky and that whole album. Number mm. two, I was wondering how Australia has been doing culturally and economically since I moved from Sydney. I bet a lot has changed with the bushfires and probably all of the Aboriginals and their lands. Number three, how is the current Aussie Prime Minister and his, uh, and his policies? And also, what do you guys think about Turnbull, Abbott and Gillard? I thought that they would they all mostly had bad policies and also Abbott and the Vegemite being banned on planes. Hope you guys reply or your answer on the next podcast and sorry for the wall of text. Right. Okay. Nelson, what's your favorite Explosions in the Sky song? My favorite is Birth and Death of the Day by <laughs> Explosions in the Sky and that whole album. <laughs> what, what, what no, I actually... Uh, so somebody had recommended that to me and I listened to like one of their songs and uh, never went back to it. Not because I didn't like it. It was just like not on my 
list of uh, things to listen to. Mm-hmm. But but you, you brought it up, right? I think yeah, you yeah. had listened to it quite a bit before. Yeah. What was what was one? Do you? Th- uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, I love Explosions in the Sky. Uh, they have an album. called- I do love Explosions in the Sky. Um, they they have an album called The Earth Is Not a Cold Dead Place. Yeah, uh, I generally it's one of the albums that when I put it on, mm-hmm. I kind of listen to the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, they've got a song called First Breath After Coma, which is actually the first song on that album. Right, uh, which I really really like. Uh, it got used in a couple of movie trailers as well, actually, because very slow and building and cinematic. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, he also asked if we know Mogwai Cigaros. I have a couple of Cigaros uh, albums and vinyl in the lounge room. Right. Um, they have an album just just doesn't have a name. Just two brackets. Close bracket, open bracket. Oh. That's the name of it. All songs untitled. Couldn't be more pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said it. Yeah, yeah. But Untitled 1 and 3 are really good as well. Okay. And if you want more recommendations, there's a really good band called This Will Destroy You. So, mm-hmm. And if you like Explosions in the Sky, you will definitely like This Will Destroy You. Yeah. And it will destroy you. Though. It, yeah, that yeah, is yeah, yeah. the Sorry, downside that was a to warning. listening. <laughs> yeah, 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 this yeah. will destroy you using explosions in the sky in the sky um and also if you like that style of music but with vocals i would recommend american football they're that same kind of soft melodic building mm. rock but there's vocals on top of it yeah um there's a song called appropriate for this time of self-quarantine called stay home yeah. it's a really good example of that it's got a really long winding cinematic intro and then vocals kick in uh yeah check out american football if you haven't cool yeah but not American football. Yeah, not not the sport. Never. <laughs> no, that's rubbish. <laughs> uh, uh, number two, uh, he's been wondering how Australia's been doing culturally and economically since he moved to Sydney. Uh, culturally, I would say um, still kind of at the same point. Mm. The, well, it the, depends yeah, the when 80s. you. It depends when. <laughs> it, yeah, depends when you moved. Yeah. I mean, you talk about the uh, Aborigines and their land. I mean, we had. Uh, um, Kevin Rudd apologized to yeah. the Aboriginal people well, a lot of the prime quite a few years ago. A lot of the prime ministers he mentions were all after Kevin Rudd as well. Oh, he does too. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, you I mean, idiot. you obviously know about that. You're the worst person uh, in the world. <laughs> but, like, uh, Australia Day is a big topic yep. that gets brought up. Yep. Uh, we had it only recently, and mm-hmm. there was more sort of protests in the streets about we should change the day. I don't think yeah. anybody's so disagreeing, hey, we should celebrate our culture, but let's not celebrate the day that we like arrived and stole some land and yeah. stole some land <laughs> stole some so, land and slaughtered a lot of indigenous people to yeah, do yeah yeah um you mentioned the bushfires uh they were all completely contained they're all completely out they're now? completely out yeah, now yeah, is- now we just have a huge pandemic <laughs> yeah well i was going to say so Varen, i think definitely sent us this email before the coronavirus yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of uh, it, or at least became a big issue yeah so that's the problem e- look, we're economically now. it's been tough and i think even our our economy isn't super good at the moment yeah yeah hasn't, well, ca- well, hasn't collapsed yeah yeah but it's not far off <laughs> alongside all other yeah um uh places in the world really <laughs> like there's a lot it's <laughs> yeah, not yeah, just yeah, Australia. Yeah. it's like yeah. everybody's suffering in the same yeah. way yeah um yeah that being said like even though our current prime minister is not someone i necessarily like and he's a very business focused man yeah. i don't even think it's it's not his fault <laughs> that yeah, everything yeah. is going to shit either yeah um and also uh how's he oh here we go how's the current australian prime minister i don't like him um he is super religious and he tried to get a bill passed so people could discriminate based on on their religious beliefs so if someone was, uh, say, very Christian and they didn't want to serve someone that was homosexual, they would legally be allowed to not serve them. Yeah. I think is, is shit. Uh, and also, uh, in any kind of big situation like we're in now uh, yeah. with uh, quarantining or the bushfires, he's very fond of saying, well, we'll let the state governments decide. So he never has to make any hard decisions. Yeah, yeah. It's... Um it was. I was like blown away when uh, that party was elected in. Yeah. In the first place, I genuinely thought. In fact, most of Australia, except one part of it, was very uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, was very liberal, which is voting Labor. Yeah. It's a confusing system. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, again, our, our, for new listeners, our Conservative Party is called the Liberal Party. It's very confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so so we don't really love it. But I mean, honestly, I think uh, this is maybe a really terrible thing to say. But I think like our politics just seems so um, uh, so heavily based on other politics around the world. Yeah, absolutely. That it's like I don't even care too much. I care more about the 
a US election yeah. than I do about our election because I feel like we have we do have some good progressive things that have happened in the mm-hmm. past and kind of put us in this good position and now we sort of seem to it just seems like we rely on yeah other uh, yeah he, here's a quick uh, cheat sheet for you if you want to know about Australian politics is they kind of echo American politics yeah. so when America goes a little more left wing so does Australia so Kevin Rudd who was uh, the more liberal prime minister was in at the same time that uh, Barack Obama was in yeah yeah and now everything's gone a little more conservative yeah. and right wing also all of our politics have started to go that way as well yeah that's right um so I'm looking forward to Bernie yeah yeah I don't even know definitely not gonna happen it's, it's, it's <laughs> probably not. uh but yes okay we answered all the questions um uh let's do another one i'm uh, gonna do the one from last week that we missed okay yep uh this is from steffi hey reddit on reddit been listening to your podcast for a while now and i love it so much i deleted my downloaded infinite monkey cage episodes to clear more story space to listen to you guys when i'm out and about avoiding human interaction very proactive of you yep. good work <laughs> Uh, Reddit on Reddit is greater than Brian Cox. I've been Thank saying you. this since the beginning. I I think this shows, Cambo, that brains doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I used that joke already when I replied to Steffi. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone else will laugh, but Steffi will be like, oh, hey. oh God. <laughs> he, he turns out he just has the same material <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> Uh, this whole show is pre-written. Yeah. Anyway, I've been wondering if you... God, we have bad writers then, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've been wondering if you guys like The Big Les Show, the YouTube animated series with the Sasquatches who swear a lot. I'm from Scotland, so, Scotland, so you guys and TBLS are pretty much my only source of funny Australians. If so, what character are you most similar to and why? If not, is there a misconception the show portrays of Australians? No. <laughs> P.S. If Australians <laughs> don't swear as much as the show makes out, just leave me in ignorant bliss, please. Steffi. Yeah, big, um, big less show. Um, I actually found this. So I had heard of it before, but I never uh, watched it. And so yeah. I went and watched it um, the other day. And it's actually pretty funny. It is. Like, it it's, is. So, it's one of those, like, very poorly um, animated yeah, yeah. cartoons. There, there was uh, a show many years ago. I don't know. Yeah, I think we, maybe we watched this together. It was called The Life and Times of Tim. Yes. Oh, and, my God. That's uh, the best. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's horrendously awkward to watch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's just cringe humor yeah. completely. But it's kind of, it's so badly animated that it's quite funny. Yeah, yeah. And I, ever, I think ever since The Life and Times of Tim kind of became, like, it was a HBO show. Yeah, HBO yeah. were known for Big budgets. Yeah, like yeah. Game of Thrones and stuff like that. They need to save some money that It year. became clearly like, oh, you don't need to be a good animator yeah. to make something funny. Yeah. And I think things like the the Big Les show yeah. have kind of come from that idea that you... I mean, I guess South Park is the real pioneer of it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. But like, I, I would say Life in Times of Tim is more directly related to the style of the Big Les show. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, as far as characters, they're, they're all kind of samey. They're all kind of samey. <laughs> I actually think that... I might be most similar to the Sasquatch, yeah. except for the fact that he's big druggy and I didn't really do any drugs. Yeah, I don't know if I'm similar to him, but I find him very funny. Yeah, yeah, he's very yeah, funny. What's he, he's sassy, oh, he's I think drug he's <laughs> what you, What's that, you fucking druggy? Um, and while it's not super representative of all of Australia, each of those caricatures is spot on of who they yeah, are. Yeah, like, like yeah. there is that person who... It, it could be that yeah. that guy exists somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, it, like right. you don't listen to it, but like, no one sounds like that. You were yeah. always like, oh, yeah, I know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I've met that guy once yeah, in my yeah, life. Yeah. 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 Um, also, if you like absurdist Australian comedy, I would say check out Auntie Donna. Um, oh, yeah, Auntie that's Donna, true. You would like that for very sure. Very weird. <laughs> yeah. Sketch uh, comedy. Sketch comedy, uh, kind of surrealist. Yeah. Uh, Often, sometimes they have like this odd Australian slant on things as well in some of their sketches. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think you'd probably like them. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. Um, but thank you, Steph, for yeah. writing in. And down with Brian Cox. Yeah. Down with Brian Cox. That's all. I was, go- I was <laughs> trying to start a chant, Camp, but you didn't join in. No, because I love Brian Cox. So I've started a different podcast. Oh. Called Down with Nelson Cox. Not you. Uh, <laughs> so about this guy. He's Cox. called Nelson Cox. It's Brian Cox's brother. Uh, they don't get it. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is deep. Yeah, we, deep. We wrote that joke. <laughs> <And> you, 
Uh, anyway, that's it yep. uh, for another episode. Thank you all for listening. We appreciate it. Um, if you would like to write into us, you can do so. Reddit podcast, R E A D I T podcast, mm-hmm. gmail.com. Yep. You can also reach us Facebook, yep. Twitter, yep. a subreddit. And sometimes I stream to Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Reddit podcast. They're all R E A D I T podcast. Um, I Here's something that I don't bring up mm-hmm. uh, uh, or have never brought up before necessarily. Um, I'm really busting to go to the toilet. Okay. <laughs> so can we just end it? Uh, wait, I just want to say. Okay. If you can rate, it's almost coming up. If you can rate and review. You go. I'll finish. <laughs> if you it's can, a, I can if you can rate and review the show, we would love it. Yep. And we've been loving getting people to do certain things with their reviews. Yes. This week I'm going to say rate the show five stars, but in the review, tell us your ultimate milk prank. Yes. <laughs> ultimate think, milk prank. Yeah, absolutely. Please. <laughs> uh, so that, that will really help us out if you rate and review and subscribe. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for listening and we will read you later. Go, Nelson. Go to the toilet. Coming out.